You know, every year you always get nervous when you know you're getting new students. And even though I've been doing this for several years, I still get butterflies when I know I'm getting a new group of kids. So imagine how I must have felt when I found out that I would be getting a visually impaired student. That adds a whole new dimension to what you do, to how you think, how you handle problems, what problems would even come up. Can you give her uh, education that she deserves to have? So that's always a question. We tried a lot of different things, but I was always in the room with her and we all worked together. And so the first semester was a real sort of learning process. One of the things I know they suggested we try with her is to like blow up assignments, you know, and really make them a lot bigger. And, uh, you know, I know we tried it a couple times and uh, the challenging part is you gotta really coordinate ahead of time. Mr. Newman needed time to actually make these things. One of the factors when we go over like the, the things that we tried is like that whole middle school, am I comfortable using this around my peers and stuff like that. When I uh, completed my master's in special education, I had no idea that my first job would be at the Maryland School for the Blind. They needed a math teacher and I had never even seen a blind student during my practice teaching. But I fell in love with these kids. After four years of teaching math at the School for the Blind, I was awarded scholarships so that I could take all of the classes in Braille and become fully certified to teach visually impaired children. And my first job was in Chincoteague, where I lived for two years, and I taught in Chincoteague at the schools in Accomack County. Much to my delight, I was able to move back to the mainland, not that I didn't like Chincoteague. They needed a teacher at Southampton Middle School. It was a county that did not have a single student that had been identified as visually impaired. So there were no teachers at all that could teach a child like that. So I was hired part-time to begin teaching my student at Southampton Middle School. Trilea was first referred to Department for the Blind and Vision Impaired because Trilea, her family, the educational support team were interested in learning, learning about what accommodations were appropriate for her with her recently discovered vision loss. You see, in Southampton County, there were no students enrolled that had a vision impairment that was so severe that it impacted their ability to read print materials at school. I um, had Tralia in math and science class in, in the fifth grade at Riverdale. It, that's where it all started when she got diagnosed with the eye condition. And um, we kind of experimented and tried to figure out what worked with her. The most obvious was making copies enlarging copies, um, having her close to the front, um, looking at closer to the smart board, closer to the board. I mean, those are the most obvious, so it, it was kind of tricky at the very beginning. I'm Ashley Burns. I'm a special education teacher at Southampton Middle School. I was actually Tralia's first case manager when she came to the middle school here in Southampton County. So I was able to work closely with Miss Teresa Ely, Tralia's mother, and Tralia Ely. One thing I, I had really wanted to talk about is how we really had to collaborate and put Tralia first. That was one thing I wanted to talk about, is putting the student first. We really had to think about what Tralia wanted and how she could access her material here at school. And sometimes we had to kind of tell her, you're going to have to do this or we need to do it this way. But usually, you know, she's, she's the exceptional student. She was able to do things how she wanted and where she wanted. After one year, uh, we realized that she needed more time and more assistance in the classes. So we had a meeting. I was hired full-time to work with Trilea at that point. We ha prepared what's called an individual education plan, and that required more assistance from the teacher. And it lists all the various needs that Shalea has. Now most children learn a lot of things automatically just by seeing them. For somebody with a visual impairment, there's a lot of things that they miss simply because they didn't see it. 
one of the things that he struggles with is seeing stuff on the board. She can't really read the handouts that the teachers give her unless they are adapted. So that was my main job to make sure that everything that she was able to access she could uh, study and read in a size that was big enough. When I first started working with her, she could read print that was 18 points. This is about 18 point type, where it says third edition. Two years later, she was reading at about 36 to 48 point. And when she actually has a choice of how big she wants to read it, it'll be this size, almost an inch size letter. And she has a lot of technology to help her, um, which we're very grateful. My TVI, Mr. Newman, I don't know where I would be without him, as well as my case manager or any of them. They are just absolutely fantastic. And they really help me as to figure out what works best for me and any accommodations. Because there's some things that I do need um, equipment-wise for visual reasons. And I might not feel confident in having that in the classroom, but they're like, okay, if you need to have this, it's not going to work because you're going to make that grade, you know, with it. And that kind of gives me the boost to be like, okay, and be more accepting of, you know, kind of being different. By following the accommodations set forth in her IEP, um, I can implement it in the classroom, such as pre preferential seating and close proximity to instruction. Trelea had excellent listening skills, so her accommodations of allowing extra time to respond was rarely needed. While modifications are changes in what is expected of the student, an accommodation helps the student work around their disability. What I'm talking about is she's able to listen and process information and make a good cognitive condition uh, connections. She's able to um, draw comparisons, make generalizations, uh, analogies and that sort of thing. So uh, my best advice to a teacher working with Trilea would be to elicit uh, responses from her. Because of her confidence and her abilities to do things, she was the one who made me feel better. Uh, so the rapport that we had, I knew that she could trust me and the things that she would need, uh, whether it was instructional things or just somebody to talk to, she could trust me. Uh, but more than that, I knew I could trust her. When I didn't have all the materials that I need or didn't know how to go about, uh, she didn't always say it, but it was like, Mr. Cop, okay. that's all right. <laughs> we'll work it out. So she was always that soothing voice, even when troubles came. She did use a lot was an, uh, like an iPad, and she would just take pictures of assignments and things, and she would try to blow them up, though. That definitely has some challenges. There are a few times where she brought her iPad to school and it wasn't charged. So we were like, oh man, all right, so we gotta find a charger for this iPad. So one of the things you know, we always had to do is when she turned in work is just to make sure she answered everything. I mean, so you know, just it's really easy when she's taking snapshots of a picture just to miss a few things. We also try to pair up with like a friend, just someone to help guide her and kind of, you know, even if it was an independent assignment, you know, we might have paired her up and just try to get her to work with someone so they could say, hey, you know, you got to line this up a little bit better. And, you know, she's incredibly smart, so whoever paired up with her, you know, on the, on the intelligence side of things really lucked out. And a lot of what worked in the class while she was able to remain was having a class buddy. If there was something she did have questions about, she was able to uh, defer to them rather than having to constantly ask questions, having to have me stop and explain specifically to her. With the assignments, there was a lot of changing in task demands and deciding what was acceptable evidence of mastery for her. When it came to certain assignments, since she was so academically inclined, I did allow a lot of choice and voice in her to when completing assignments. When it came time to establish the, the class buddy, I, I did ask Trelea if there was somebody in the classroom that she would feel more comfortable with. That way that there was already a pre-established relationship and somebody that she would not feel self-conscious around or asking questions. At first it was very overwhelming, however, being in communication with her IEP coordinator and Mr. Newman and keeping the lines of communication open 
with them and with guidance department and enabled success in the classroom. So the big thing that we realized with Trulia is that communication was key. In order to ensure success, I had to communicate with Mr. Newman. Before lessons, if I knew that I needed a text enlarged, I would talk to Mr. Newman. He would enlarge it for me. That way she could move seamlessly between whole group instruction and to independent practice. I went to the Lions Club in Franklin, where Trillia lives, and they were very generous. They donated money so that we could buy her a lot of wonderful technology and equipment that makes it so much easier for her to read. Definitely my CCTV, which is basically a big monitor screen, and it has a camera um, and a little tray that you move, and you put the paper on, and you um, and it projects it onto the screen and that helps me a lot because I can do that when I'm writing and I come into my office, well Mr. Newman's office and I just work on it and that really helps me the most out of everything else. This is a special calculator that not only uh, puts the image on the screen but it also says out loud what you're doing. So say I did a mathematical problem It's called a talking calculator. And this is a wonderful item that we received from the American Printing House for the Blind. Two years ago, Mary Newman got in touch with the Franklin Lions Club, and the Franklin Lions Club applied for a foundation grant to cover a child, two children that he had in the school that needed some equipment. First, you must contact the Lions Club. All funding from the grant or a grant from the foundation goes through a Lions Club. You make an application there and there's a financial need requirement. The club then turns over the application to the foundation. The foundation then inspects the grant, reviews it, gets in contact with people that are involved, mainly the teachers that are responsible for the child. And at that time, we sought the research of trying to find what really type of equipment is needed. That led to a, a, a grant from the Franklin Lions Club for $10,000 to buy the equipment that we furnished. We uh, made the presentation last year to the Southampton school system, equipment for the two children that are now using it today. The Lions do a lot for the schools. I know Boykin, I know the area of Lions, Windsor, Smithfield, Boykins, Franklin, were in the schools. And the best part of that is Generally, you're going to find one or two children that need help. We screen maybe 2,500 kids in the area. That's just in what we call our zone. And we always seem to find one or two that need help or a way we can help those students. And that's how we connect with the schools. We work with the school nurse. We work with the uh, administration when a need arrives. We take that need and move forward to, with our paper shuffling to get it done to what needs. And what's nice about this is it generally comes out with a positive attitude and help the students. That's what we're after is if this equipment makes their learning easier, make them more proficient, it's well worth that effort.